So finally, we're going to solve rational equations or fractional equations. And you know, in many technical fields, uh, there are situations where we have to in involve solving uh, equations that have algebraic fractions. Um, everything we've done up until this point as we conclude this topic has not had an equal sign in the problem. So please look at the problems that we're getting ready to solve and notice that these have equal signs in them. So we are solving equations now. Let's see what else did I want to share with you. Um, to solve these equations we'll multiply both sides of the equation by the least common denominator. This will allow us to eliminate the denominator, not to get common denominators. Um, the big thing here, though, is that the steps to do this involve factoring the denominator, finding the least common denominator. Well, that's what we just finished doing when we were adding and subtracting algebraic fractions. So now we're in our third step. Instead of getting an equivalent fraction with that common denominator, we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by the whole whole least common denominator and caution. Your goal is to clear the denominators, not to get a common denominator. Finally, you're going to solve the resulting equation and check your answers. So let's go ahead and do the first question. So this first question, I'm going to scroll a little bit here. The first question, we're going to solve this equation where the least common denominator is the number 6. I'm going to rewrite the equation so you can see my work a little bit more clearly. So there's the equation. And so the least common denominator is uh, the value of 6. So what we do, and actually I'm going to show it properly, we multiply both sides of this equation by 6 is what we do. Remember, this is to keep the balance in this problem. That means this y over 3 gets multiplied by 6, and this 5 over 6 gets multiplied by 6. I'm going to write another step, which is a little, you know, it's, it's just going to take some time. So this gets multiplied by 6, and then that's going to be multiplied by 6. So I'm going to have this 5 over 6 will get multiplied by 6. We already know that the right side got multiplied by 6 and it's equal to 12. Our goal is to eliminate the denominators. When you multiply a fraction by the least common denominator, you will get a multiple. But like right here, 6 over 6 is equal to 1. So those both cancel out and that will leave you with a 5. I'm going to bring down the 12 here too. See the 6 over 3 here? 6 divided by 3 is 2. If you can just go ahead and call that a 2 times y, that would be best. We have eliminated the denominators in this problem. I will commonly from here on out say 3 goes into here once and into here twice. So this is left to become a 2y. Now all we do is we subtract 5 from both sides. So that'll be a 7 right here. The 5's are gone, so we have a 2y left. And then we'll divide both sides by 2, and we have our solution to this equation, y is equal to 7 halves. I will take that and check it frequently to see how I did. I'm not going to take the time right now to do it for this one, but periodically I will do that. Um, let's go ahead and go in order. Let's go to question number 2. So question number 2, its common denominator is a 40 between an 8 and a 5 and the x. I'm going to go ahead and move this guy over here. So I'm going to state that the LCD is 40 times x, but if you don't mind, I'm going to write it as 5 times 8 times x. And, and so when I multiply this fraction right here by the 5 times 8 times x, the x's will cancel out. I'm going to go ahead and show it where I have a little bit more space. So I have 1 over x equals 1 over 8 minus 3 over 5. So again, I'm going to multiply both sides. I don't really need to multiply it like this by 5 times 8 times x, but I want you to see the x's will cancel out. And how about here, 5 times 8 times x? I want you to see the 8's will cancel out. And right here, 5 times 8 times x, the 5's will cancel out. Actually, I'm going to use a highlighter. So here the x's cancel out, and you're left with 5 times 8 times 1, which is 40 right here. The 8's will cancel out. The 5's will cancel out. All the denominators are gone. So again, 5 times 8 times 1 is 40. Over here, 5 times x times 1 is 5x. 
3 times 8 is 24 times x is 24x and all these denominators have been crossed off because 5 over 5 is 1, 8 over 8 is 1, x over x is 1. And now on the right hand side 5x take away 24x is a negative 19x and when I divide both sides by a negative 19 I have my solution for x and that is x is equal to 40 divided by a negative 19. I am not inclined to call that a negative 2 and I think 2 nineteenths. Um, I will probably leave it as an improper fraction. Let's do a couple more. So let's go up here. So these all have monomial denominators. I bring this next one up because I just want you to be careful. While the LCD is just the number 4, everything gets multiplied by 4. This gets multiplied by 4. This does. This ties. Both sides of the equation. So when you multiply this fraction by 4, the 4's will cancel out and you'll be left with just x. But the 6 has got to be multiplied by 4 and you'll call that 24. And that's got to be multiplied by 4 and you'll call that 4x. So again, these are going to cancel and you'll be left with x. 6 times 4 is 24 and 4 times x is 4x. Remember, I want to solve for x, so I'm going to get the x's on the right side of this equation. This is minus 1x, so 4x minus 1x is 3x equals this 24, and now I'll divide both sides by 3 and I get an answer of x is equal to 8. This one's an easy one to check real quickly, so I'm going to go ahead and do it right here just so you can see. You know, I can use my calculator on the others, and I will from time to time. The original problem, I'm going to go ahead and erase these right now. The original problem was x over 4, and x is 8, so I'm going to substitute in 8 for x. And on the right side, I'm going to substitute in 8 for that x. 8 divided by 4 is 2. 2 plus 6 is 8, and I get to say, I know I got this problem correct. Let's go ahead again. Now, I may start giving you some tricks. I'm not sure if I'm ready to do it yet in this problem. The LCD is 2y. Um, again, so that you can clearly see what I do each time, I'm going to give ourselves a little bit more space. So I'm just writing the question over again, and I really like to multiply it in red. So this fraction has to be multiplied by 2y, this fraction has to be multiplied by 2y, and the right side has to be multiplied by 2y. Please, um, it doesn't have to be exactly 2y. The 2's cancel out, they're equal to 1. The y's cancel out, they're equal to 1. And you have left right here just a 5. But right here, this 2 times y, they're not um, connected with uh, super glue or anything. There's a dot in between. It's 2 times y. And this y over that y are equal to 1. And 2 times 8 is going to be 16 right here. So I put a 16. The right side I have 2y. And 16 plus 5 on the left is 21. And I divide both sides by 2 to solve for y, and I have y equals 21 over 2. You know, that is 10 and a half. So if you wanted to put that into your graphing calculator, let's just do this really quickly. So if you wanted to go 5 divided by, in parentheses, 2 times y, which is 10 and a half, it's got to be in parentheses. This right here has got to be in parentheses. 5 divided by 2 times whatever our value for y is, plus um, 8 divided by the 10.5. So I'm taking the shortcut route here, I'm not dealing with the fractions, I'm using decimals. And I just want to know if that equals 1. So I can check for myself to be sure that I did this problem correctly. I think I'll go ahead and take the next one because um, then uh, number five, uh, 6 actually is going to be a proportion. So you might pause and do this one yourself. I am going to start uh, just doing the work in the original problem. And I'll start shortcutting a little bit. So when I multiply both sides of this fraction by 9, those 9's will cancel out. But this 1 third times 9 will be 9 over 3, if you need to see it like that. 9 over 3 is 3. Just don't forget to multiply the 2x by 9. So again, these 9's cancel out. And so in this fraction, you're left with the numerator. You are clearing the denominators. There's a minus sign next. 1 times 9 is 9 over 3, and then I'm going to erase that, and I'm going to say 9 over 3 is 3. 
On the right side, 2x times 9 is 18x. I'll go ahead and collect the minus 1 and the minus 3 is a minus 4. And then I think I will subtract 2x from both sides. And on the right, I'll have a 16x. On the left, I'll have that negative 4. Don't forget that sign. And I'll divide both sides by 16. Be careful, don't divide by 4. That's a common thing to do just because six, 4 goes into 16 four times. But my answer is a negative 1 quarter for this one, whatever you do. Um, and I have solved for x. Again, I could put it back in here. You just got to be careful. If I, if I did it by hand, if I checked this by hand, I'd have 2 times a negative 1 quarter minus 1 over 9. And then I'd have to subtract 1 third, and I want to see if that equals 2 times a negative 1 quarter, which is a negative 2 fourths, which is a negative 1 half. So I wonder if the left side right here will be equal to a negative 1 half. So 2 times a negative 1 over 4 is a negative 2 over 4. Um, and then all of that is divided by 9. Well, when you divide by 9, you multiply by 1 ninth. So that's a negative 2 over 36. Don't forget, I had a minus 1 third right here, a minus 1 third, and I'm going to multiply top and bottom of that by 12 to get a common denominator. So I'm trying not to be as lazy here. So a negative 2 over 36, and then I've got to subtract 12 over 36, which is, um, a, let's see, when I subtract, oh, that is subtracting 12, um, a negative 14 over 36, and I'm going to pause here a minute because something didn't work, so I'm just going to, okay, I found out what it was. You see this big old fraction bar? I wasn't supposed to divide by 9 right away. I, I was supposed to subtract 1. So let's go, let's go back here. So 2 times a negative quarter minus 1. So that's a negative 2 quarters, and I've got to subtract 1, which is 4 over 4. And then I'll divide it by 9. Sorry about that. It's okay. It's good for you to see that I do make mistakes. And then I'm going to add the opposite there. That's going to be a negative 6 over 4 when I add those. And when I divide by 9, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal is 1 over 9, and that's a negative 6 over 36. Boy, oh boy, I'm really trying to show my good. Um, then I have to put this minus 1 third in here, and so I had done all of this, and I would lost my 1 third, so I've got a multiply top and bottom by 12 there, so finally I think I'm going to get there. So I've got a negative 6 over 36 minus 12 over 36 for a total of a negative 18 over 36 finally, which is a negative 1 half. I apologize for that. Um, again, kind of good for you to see. We'll come back and we'll do some more solving equations. Um, this number 6 we're going to solve by um, setting the cross products equal. It's going to be just easier because it's two fractions equal to one another. Number 7 as well.